Uh, we appreciate you joining with us this morning. It's the Lord's Day morning in the month of February, and we're glad that you have joined us. And I hope that this video from the book of Revelation is a blessing to you. And as I've said before, if you have prayer requests, uh, let me know, and I'll promise to pray for you. And uh, you can post them there with me on the comment section, or you could email them to me at dparker4825 yahoo.com and i promise <clears throat> to pray for you and i do pray for the subscribers and the viewers of these videos that god will bless you and help you as you live and walk your life for the lord jesus christ and it's a blessed thing to know jesus as your lord and savior and to, and to live unto him that's the life that's worth living as you live it unto the lord jesus christ and it's the life that's not wasted well we're coming today out of the book of revelation chapter 7 and the Bible says, And after these things I saw four angels stand on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Well, right here we're reading about more judgments of the Lord about to take place. And uh, these angels stand on the four corners of the earth are about ready to unleash these, uh, these winds. Uh, they're, they're just about ready to let it go on the earth, uh, which is going to be further judgment and further destruction upon this world during the tribulation period. As I've said before, it's going to be a time of tribulation such as the world has never seen. So much so, the Lord Jesus Christ said, except those days should be shortened, uh, no flesh would prevail, nobody would live through it. And uh, here we read about more judgments coming, these four angels stand on the four corners of the earth. Some guy said, well, the earth is round, it doesn't have corners. Well, it does too. The east and west and north and south are the four corners of the earth. And, uh, but right here, judgment's about to fall from these angels. And then verse two, look what happens. <clears throat> and I saw another angel ascending from the east, uh, having the seal of, God, of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. And uh, he's about to say something. Another angel appears on the side, on the scene. Almost, these four angels are about ready to unleash their judgment. And then here comes, ascending out of the east, another angel, crying with a loud voice to those four angels, uh, saying, verse 3, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. In other words, wait a minute, we got... We got one thing to be done before you unleash these judgments upon this earth. One thing, so hold, hold up just a minute here, this angel is saying. Now this is very, very important, this event that's about to happen here. Uh, this sealing of his servants in their foreheads. Now this is not the mark of the beast that's being talked about here. This is God sealing some special, very special people that he has chosen and about ready to send them forth uh, to carry the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of uh, unto the world at this time and these are the hundred and forty four thousand now you may have heard the number hundred forty four thousand many times but right here is where we find this in the bible uh now there's uh, so-called uh there are cults uh that claim that they are the hundred and forty four thousand don't you pay that no mind they're liars they're wrong that's not the truth they are not the hundred and forty four thousand uh these cultic people that uh, follow calvin russell uh, they don't know what they're talking about, nor do they know the Bible. They're all mixed up and deceived by Satan. We're told very plainly who the 144,000 is. It's 12,000 out of each tribe of Israel. It says so right here in the Bible. And uh, when you try to change that, uh, you're not correct with the Bible, nor do you know the Bible. And you make, you're making mockery out of yourself. You're making a fool of yourself. Verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now it's very plain who this hundred and forty four thousand is. And it's very plain from the twelve tribes of Israel. So don't try to tell me that's modern day followers of, of, of Russell or Russellites. Uh, is is so incorrect. The Bible's true and I believe the Bible. I know many of you do too. Verse five, he tells us now who these hundred and forty four thousand are. We already told now we're going to more detail about the 144,000. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. 
Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Neptali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. And you add it up, <coughs> that's 144,000. Uh, and so these people are sealed by God, and we'll read more about them later on in the scripture. But we already know that they go to carry the gospel of the of the of the Lord Jesus Christ unto that world during the tribulation period. Now we're about to read something else, beginning in verse nine. That's very very interesting. Uh, there is a great number of people who get saved during the tribulation period. I know that comes as a shock to some people, uh, but uh, it's so true. Right here it is in the Bible. We're about to read it. There there's going to be a a, a, a very large number of people who are saved out of the tribulation period. Now, don't get don't get me wrong there. I know where you're coming from, and when you're when you're saying uh, that God's going to send a strong delusion upon them that they should believe a lie, that is for those who have rejected the gospel of Christ during this dispensation. That is for those. Now, right here, I think we're reading about a number of people who have never heard. The gospel of Jesus Christ or certainly not to be classified as a Christ projector I think that's what we're talking about but yes oh out of the Thessalonians we read about those who would not believe God sends a strong delusion upon those people that they should believe a lie and they will not be saved they'll take the mark of the beast and they'll die in their sins and go to the devil's hell that's what's going to happen to them well uh, that's their faith that is the Christ rejecter's faith for this dispensation and period of time. And so the people who are about us today who have clearly heard the gospel message and who have heard the salvations in Jesus Christ, when they mock and make their fun and go on and reject, uh, when the tribulation period enters, God's going to send a strong delusion upon them that they should believe a lie. But... Uh, that's not everybody on the face of the earth. And don't get the idea because those people will never be saved. I don't get the idea that nobody should ever be saved. There will be people saved during the tribulation period. We're fixing to read it. Right here we just read about 144,000 that are sealed. These people are saved, 144,000 Jews. We just read back in chapter 6 uh, uh, in verse 9 about how that... Uh, when he had opened the fifth seal, he said, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Well, uh, right here is a group of martyrs that are obviously saved during the tribulation period. Uh, we find this large group of martyrs in verse, in verse 9 of chapter 6. Now in, verse, uh, in, in chapter 7, we read about 144,000 who, who, who know the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll read more about their ministry as we go through the book. And now, we're in verse 9 of chapter 7, we are about to read about another group of people who are saved out of the Great Tribulation period. And a, a huge number. Let's read a little bit. Verse 9. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number. How, how big is this number of people? A great multitude which no man could number. Wow. Let me read that again. A great multitude which no man could number. Now, you're going to find that these people are saved during the tribulation period, and uh, which no man can number. Where are they from? Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues uh, stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and psalms in their hand. What about that? Now, we're going to read more about these people. But right here, we know where they're from. It's an innumerable number of people. And they're from all nations and kindreds and tongues uh, from around the world is who these people are. They're from every nation and every tribe and every, co every continent. There'll be Americans in that, Germans in that, Frenchmen in that, uh, Africans in that. There will be people from uh, the furthest remote isles probably in this. Uh, they will make up this people. In verse 10, what are they doing? And we're going to read more about them. Listen. 
uh, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and, uh, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne their faces, and worshipped God. What's happening here when this great multitude that no man can number uh, declares with a loud voice, worship unto God, salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. These angels fall on their faces and worship God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. They fall down and worship. This first, this innumerable company of people, they bow and worship. And then the angels and the beasts and the four and twenty elders, they likewise fall down and worship the Lord God. When they see this great multitude which is saved out of the tribulation period, when they see these people worshiping God, they too bow down and worship God. And uh, they, they give glory and praise unto God, which liveth forever and ever. And one of the elders answered, saying to me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Verse 14, here's the answer. And I said to him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these are the saved of the tribulation period. Yes, there's much death going on in the tribulation period. We've already read about it. We're going to read about more death that goes on. It'll be a worse time it's ever, ever could be imagined upon this earth. But right here is a great multitude of people. As terrible as things are upon the earth, uh, they have known and come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Verse 15, Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He that saith on the throne shall dwell among them. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them any more. So evidently, uh, they got saved in the great tribulation, but they had some hard days to live there. Hunger, thirst, heat, famine, uh, all these things, they suffered for that. They suffered many, many days, perhaps some of them suffered through these times. And remember, uh, if they didn't receive the mark of the beast, they couldn't buy or sell while upon the earth. Uh, so it's very difficult. Perhaps it shall be impossible for people to get food in those days. We read uh, back uh, in the last chapter, chapter 6, how the famine would be upon the earth and the, uh, uh, the black horse and the bounces in the rider's hand and that uh, the wheat and barley and all would be very, very expensive in that day and time. And so these people here have more against them than what they had because if they don't have the mark of the beast, they won't be able to buy or trade or sell and so it's going to be extra hard on these people who accept Jesus Christ but notice that in spite of all these difficulties in spite of these terrible hardships we read about in this book people accept Jesus Christ and they live for him ain't that amazing uh, Jesus when he comes into your heart he'll change you he'll make a new creature of you in Christ Jesus and and if you had to go through the hardest thing that will ever be on this earth uh, you'll go through it, and you'll go through it trusting Him, and you'll not deny Him, because He will come to mean more to you than anything upon this earth. Jesus Christ will come to mean more to you than anything you could imagine upon this earth, no matter how extreme or how terrible it might be. Uh, when He's in your heart, as He said to Paul, He said, My grace is sufficient for thee. And so uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. Verse 17, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them into everlasting everlasting fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, like I said, it's going to be a hard time. And no doubt there will be some tears in these people's eyes because they may have loved ones that don't accept. And they may see them with the mark of the beast in them uh, suffering something terrible. No doubt their hearts will be broken. And they may have children who reject when they, whom they have accepted. And they may see and witness this. They'll weep. They'll cry. They may see their uh, some of their friends and relatives uh, dying from lack of food uh, and the plagues that are coming upon this world. And they may see them suffering with fevers and all kinds of uh, of all kinds of uh, 
uh, things breaking out on their body and uh, smallpox, who knows what kinds of things, all kinds of viruses that may fall upon them. And tears will be in their eyes. They may see their wives looking just so bleak and so worn out uh, that uh, they shall weep and uh, they'll be so unhappy. They may think of the days before when life was so good and they lived so well and things were great and now it's all gone. No doubt it shall bring some tears to their eyes. If you've never known the Lord Jesus Christ, why not call upon him and accept him today while you have time?